Hi, everybody. It is Tuesday, March 12th in the United States of America in the year of our and your Lord 2024. It's what chaos. I'm DJ Bean. That is Pete Blackburn. And that is Ray J. Paterka, a.k.a. Sean DePaz. I think we're going uh, Ray J is your main name now. And Sean DePaz can be your a.k.a. I can get by on that. Hmm. Uh, speaking of J.J. Paterka, we'll get to it a little bit later in the show. But the Buffalo Sabres are heading to Germany later this year. And that what a what a time for JJ Paterka. Bring him home. What a time for I'll tell you what, man. We'll talk about it. But when those hometown boys get off the bus, touch down the plane, they're like the Beatles over there. How many uh how many Germans do you think are aware of uh Ray J? I think the only musician that they know is Lubega. Lubega. Yeah. He's German. <laughs> How, how, do you think that a lot of Germans know the cultural impact of Ray J? I feel like they might only know the cultural. Like, if they know Ray J, they're probably like, oh, he makes music? Oh, I don't know. Oh, you're right. I don't right. Know the any, cultural I don't, impact yeah. is... Like, they might know who Ray J is. I don't know any Ray J songs. Yeah, you do. If I had one wish, oh, okay, I know that we song. would be best friends. Love to death. It's a good song. That's a good song. As a matter of fact, I was the one who said I loved you first. Well, I guess... It was about eight years ago... Don't act like you don't know. <laughs> I guess you, you can't have sex with Kim Kardashian without one good song. I feel like Pete just running the numbers. I don't want to get into people's personal lives, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure that like we've all had uh, friends and acquaintances who don't have good songs. And what makes Kim Kardashian different than any of the rest of us? Everything about her. Most <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Everything about her life, uh, her history. Her Sean, can we get a quick numbers crunch on, on Kim Kardashian? In her life. <laughs> In her life. <laughs> can we get a life, a life crunch on Kim Kardashian? I don't know. I think that we're all kind of the same. I don't want to, uh, not on some all men are created equal shit, but like. Oh, I just heard a car go by and I thought that it was music playing. And I was like, Sean, if you're playing Ray J, we're going to get demonetized. <laughs> Knock it off. Oh, boy. Well, that's your rundown on uh, Armenian uh, American celebrities and their... That's why you you're in know. Kim Kardashian's corner. Yeah. She's Armenian. Yeah. You made a face at Armenian. Oh, Did no, you know? I, was, I was looking at something else. I was wondering where you were going with that because like, I, I often forget that Kim Kardashian is Armenian. It's I'm biased because I'm Armenian, but... It's the only thing I can think of. With I mean, if it ends in I A N, you know, it's so like Zach Cassian. I was gonna ask who's the best Armenian player in the NHL, and it was gonna be like obviously there's no Armenian players in the NHL, but I feel like there's probably a couple. I don't know. We got Italians. We got plenty of Italians. It's a real uh, Italian. Um, it's like the golden age of Italians in the NHL. Ooh, Tony D'Angelo. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly where my mind was going. That's your guy. <laughs> yep. You said it's your favorite player when we were talking before the show. Mm -hmm. You were saying that uh, teams should have traded for him and extended him. Well, he was he was famously available. He was on he was, waivers. He was. He was on uh, wave skis. And then they just waved him goodbye. You know who I'd like to wave goodbye is this uh, Matt Rempe fella. And I would have never thought I would want to begin a show with Hit Chat. Famously, as I have correctly laid out, you want to talk about hits and circumcise hits, go frame by frame. Like, that is a Twitter experience. Mm -hmm. You could do it. You could dip in and out as you like. I have never once, not once in my life, seen or heard an interesting conversation about hits, but some need to be discussed. So, Sean, if you could uh, just uh, throw a, a timer up there 
for how long we can uh, talk about this uh, Matt Rempe hit. Just uh, give it to us. All right, uh, <laughs> Pete, your thoughts on this Matt Rempe hit? It was bad. It was real bad. It was so bad. Uh, it was so bad that everybody agreed that it was bad. Even Rangers fans said it, would, it was bad. All right, you want to stop it? All right, you have, you used only 10 of the 15 seconds that is for the year mm -hmm. so we have five more seconds the rest of we'll the year bank those. to just yeah yeah you want to bank it we'll bank those five seconds if we can get it to roll over to next year we'll have 20 seconds to discuss hits now i think that we've done it the right way we who cares about the he elbowed he a bad uh elbow a little chicken wing right well, to the jaw of uh jonas siegenthaler yep all right, so that maybe we used like an extra three seconds no, that, there. That, that, no, 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 that was that was just describing the play. We weren't talking right. about the the hit. We were just telling you what happened. We were doing our journalistic duty. Right. We were, uh, you know, what we were doing setting the scene better on some fucking uh, no a John Mulaney bullshit Thursday. <laughs> no, on some uh, on some Friday morning one a.m. shit. We were painting a picture. Oh, did you take down the paintings? I did take down the paintings. They were uh, a little uh they were a little much to be having hanging back there. Yeah, we don't want to dwell on the past too much. Mm -hmm. uh, we we're don't want moving forward. We're trying to get our insider Johnny Laser la lazy us he, to he, not point uh have all signs point backwards. They point forward. John old John boy uh had a, took a step forward last night. He predicted a Mika Zibanejad goal at 5 on 5 in the Rangers game. And good old Mika came through for him. I famously always leave my computer charger here. So I was unable to. F I, I, I was drafting a press release of us announcing that Johnny Lazarus was named our official insider. And my computer died. So I was unable to uh, finish it. But uh, it read, multi-platform hockey personality Johnny Lazarus has been named by blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, he joined the show on Monday to report his weekend was, quote, very bad, <laughs> but that his birthday is, quote, coming up. <laughs> Amazing. I did see somebody respond on Twitter yesterday. They were like, he's such a good insider, he broke his own relationship. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right, so we're not going to talk about the hit, which was it got him a five-minute major for elbowing in a game misconduct. He got tossed from the game. We'll have a suspension hearing uh, over the phone, mm -hmm. less than five games. More I want to discuss the Rangers of it all and the Rempe mania of it all. Famously, it was going to take a lot to win me over on the, hey, check out this tall guy. Who plays five minutes a night? Like, I already knew when a tall guy who played five minutes a night was fighting that the Bruins were going to end up trading like a second round pick for him next year. So I was like, I'll just wait till he's on the Bruins before I have to deal with this shit every evening. It's gone up and down, though, because now the conversation has gone from, whoa, he's tall. He fights to hashtag take a break, Justin. Don't fight so much. We love you so much. We don't want you to get hurt to... This is a bad guy. This is a real bad seed, <laughs> not the type of guy we want in the league, to which I say, if that's your finish line, that's where I was starting because I don't want that type of guy in the league just because I don't fucking care about tall people who throws throw hits. Uh, no offense, Matt Rempe. I care about tall people, and I care about guys who throw hits. Uh, I just care about guys who can also play hockey while doing those two things. Like, I love Tage Thompson because he's tall. And he's extremely fun to watch. It's a unique experience. Uh, I'm a big fan of a guy like Tom Wilson, uh, 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 Matthew Kachuk, a guy who who's willing to get to the dirty areas, willing to willing to blow somebody up every once in a while. Uh, I like physicality in the game. I don't want to see it go anywhere, but I also don't want to see this bean pole of a man skating around no control of his limbs and throwing his elbows into people's faces but i i feel like hockey will always be physical and rarely when i go to see hockey or when i watch it do i feel this isn't physical enough as long as long as you have a puck and sticks and skates you're going to be finishing checks you're going to have scrums in front of the net you're going to have aggression because it's a bunch of people who are trying their hardest to win a sport and you're allowed to hit each other. So I think that physicality won't go away. I don't like the, or I guess I just don't care for slash need 
physical like planted physicality see that man that is the physical cool yeah. let the guys crash into each other the way that guys normally crash into each other and that's physical enough for me sure but like uh, the close the more that we move on like y- you use the term circumcising the mosquito quite a bit i do a lot of people love to circumcise the mosquito when it comes to physicality and there is a line between doing that and like just wanting clean hits like obviously the goal should be that the the hits are clean the players are protected but also, at the end of the day, there's always going to be uh, an area where guys cross the line if you leave physicality in the game. If you leave hitting in the game, there are going to be good hits and there are going to be bad hits. You can't fully eradicate bad hits from the game. The point that we should be trying to make is that when bad hits are thrown, you punish them and you punish them appropriately in order to be a deterrent from those kind of guys to play on the right side of the line. Uh, my give a shit meter on Matt Rempe has uh, has has typically been uh, pretty low, but something did happen with this that drew the ire of uh, our friend Sean and of you, Pete. Sean, what razzed you up about the oh, way yeah. that he followed up this action? Yeah, the the waving goodbye. You don't get to be a douchebag and then act like you're right. Like you did something wrong and then waved goodbye like you were the winner here. It's like you were the asshole. So my bigger takeaway from the hit, like the hit was bad. He's going to get suspended for it. My bigger takeaway from last night's events was that Matt Rempe had loser behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, bad behavior. Uh, it's not good behavior. It's not good behavior. If, especially if you're going to be the guy that fights every game and you, that's going to be your thing, you can't walk away from a fight after you throw a horrendous hit that is going to get you suspended. If you throw that hit, you have to fight for it. And he was actively avoiding Curtis McDermott for most of the night. And Curtis McDermott wanted a piece of him. Curtis McDermott, I think, was in, was acquired by the New Jersey Devils strictly as an answer to Matt Rempe. And the fact that Rempe wouldn't fight him last night after throwing that hit and then had the audacity to wave goodbye as he was leaving the ice Big time loser behavior. Yeah, you can get away with being like a big tall guy who doesn't fully have control of his body yet. And like, ah, you play on the edge. Sometimes you go a little too far. You have a dirty hit, whatever. But you got to be like, you got to own the fact that you did something wrong. You can't just wave goodbye like you did something. So two things. Uh, Matt Rempe has two points in 10 games. And yes, he was active on the scoring sheet. As soon as he uh, parachuted into the NHL, and yes, that was very exciting. But he plays five thirty-eight a game, so That's I think crazy. that in the grand scheme of things, for a competitive team, this is him going away would be inconsequential. The second thing I need to point out is, yeah, my eyes have been wandering to the chat, and God, I love the chat so much because they're borderline barking at us <laughs> for how on the line towards hit chat we are. Uh, that we're not doing enough grab ass. That this is these are moments where we should be chit-chatting. I feel it was important to set up the Matt Rempe conversation because it gets us to the New York Rangers conversation, Mm -hmm. which is the one that we really want to have, which is, oh, you whiny little babies. How does it feel now, the team that in 2021 put out a press release basically asking for the assassination of Tom Wilson (laughs) because he had punched uh, Pavel Buchnevich and, and Artemi Panarin. And like our, pow- power bombed Artemi Panarin. Oh, yeah. There was that little <laughs> like headlock. Yeah. He, uh, but was it Buchnevich that he uh, told to splash around? Which one did he have to splash around? Uh, I don't know, but he. Oh, he, this is he, this might be hit shot. He, Fuck. he he ended up he ended up injuring Artemi Panarin, and Panarin was uh, out for the remainder of the season after that. So yes. that's why people were. He was real out for upset. the remainder of the season when there was like six games left. Yeah, and I think that the, the Rangers were bad, and they were like, "All right, mm, this, there's no point in, in coming to work." And if you did not uh, watch the entire 24 hours of the stream, I want to say at about 4:15 uh, a.m., we read word for word the Rangers <laughs> statement that they <laughs> we did had a long, put a on. long bit on the Rangers statement from 2021. We did an analysis of of uh, the Rangers statement on. Capitals forward Tom Wilson not being suspended for his horrifying act of uh, violence. Did you say that you that uh, there was a statement put out about uh, Matt Rempe? Yeah, the Rangers put out a statement about Matt Rempe, uh, which, to their credit, they uh, they took a page from the past mm. and they 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 uh, they kept that same energy for mm. their own player 
when he displayed a horrifying act of violence. The New York Rangers are extremely disappointed that Rangers forward Matt Rempe was not suspended for his horrifying act of violence last night at Madison Square Garden. Rempe is a repeat offender with a long history of these types of acts, and we find it shocking that the NHL and their Department of Player Safety failed to take the appropriate action and suspend him indefinitely. I think that that is, a, uh, that, that is class from the New York Rangers. Good on the New York Rangers. That is consistency. Do we think we get a reel out of that? I think so. Yeah, I think it's, it's we get like possible. twenty seconds. We won't don't get any of the hit chat in there. People will click right off it. But just setting that up and then getting into them calling for uh, George Peros being uh, unfit to continue in his current role. Rangers, uh, you babies, and you know what? You're having a good season, but you have to bring in all these uh, sideshow things. Why can't you just do cool, exciting things like trade for Wenberg? All the time. It's true. Uh, do we think we see Matt Rempe in a uh, in a playoff game this year? Are you asking me if I think uh, Rempe's time is over? Rempe's <laughs> time work- is over. <laughs> there was a lot of workshopping of that before the show. Hit it again. Rempe's time is over. That's, that's such a clean sound bite. That's, that's, uh, that's Rhode Island native Richard Jenkins, who I believe that was his breakout role, which I love. He broke out with Step Brothers. I would say that he was the breakout star of that film. Fair yeah. part of it. He was great. Amazing. Uh, Chewbacca also in it. <laughs> True. Uh, should we hit a read before we get on to our uh, next topic? I don't think we should hit a read. I think that we should uh, hit a testimony. Okay. How about that? How about that? Why don't I give you a prize picks one? Because uh, I was watching a podcast recently, and uh, Shane Gillis... And Andrew Schultz were having a heated debate. And let's say Shane Gillis was making some good points. But Andrew Schultz was there. <laughs> and you know where else he is sometimes? Prize picks. I do know that. He's that in that community section of prize picks, which is cool because if you're like, where as I go and uh do my DFSing, daily fantasy sports, I don't want to be uh Eric Carmen voice all by myself. R.I.P. Eric Carmen. I almost quote tweeted the news of his death yesterday with "I'll die myself." It would have been distasteful. <laughs> it would have been pretty distasteful. So I didn't. I screen grabbed it to send to you, and then when I went to text you, there was something else that I needed to text you that was more important. So I was like, I won't do that. And we well, talked about hockey for every a bit. time, uh, every single night when it hits 10 p.m. I say it's 10 p.m. Do you know where Andrew Schultz is? And typically. If I know Andrew Schultz like I think I know Andrew Schultz, it I know that he's maybe going to cross the line and some stuff that would anger Shane Gillis, mm-hmm. but also that he's in that community area on prize picks. And that's what I like about prize picks. It truly is a community. And though football season's over, we're about to get into all of the March Madness stuff. I am so excited. I told you guys every year, me and my fellas, we rent a house and just watch March Madness. Get into all the stuff, and I will be doing it on Prize Picks. It's the number one fantasy sports app where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. You can now win up to 100x your money. That's not a thousand gex, that's 100x your money on Prize Picks. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn 10 bucks into a thousand with NBA, NHL, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app. So go to prizepicks.com slash uh, PHNX, it says, and use slash code what chaos. slash what chaos. Prizepicks.com slash what chaos and use code what chaos for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash what chaos and use code what chaos. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Andrew Schultz. That's right. Uh, I also want to tell you about our friends at Manscaped because St. Patrick's Day is coming up and your little leprechaun, he's looking hairy. I'm very sorry. He's not little. He's he's like about average, maybe a little above average, depending on a good day. But I don't he's, think maybe this is coming. No, I'm not going to. If it's uh, all I say is if it's a size of a leprechaun, leprechauns, that's pretty, that's pretty sizable. Like an actual leprechaun. Oh, yeah. If you've that's got like, a leprechaun, that's, that's, like that's might be too big. Four feet tall. Imagine, I that's mean, that's like half of Matt Rempe. Chris Rock said the thing that you want to hear if uh, you and your partner are getting hot and heavy and they see something for the first time. He said, you know, it's a good sign if they say, oh, hello. <laughs> what if they said, holy shit, is that a leprechaun? <laughs> what if they said top of the morning to you? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, hello. That's a, <laughs> I have never seen 
a leprechaun looking uh, 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 penis. <laughs> well, if you need to shave your leprechaun, boy, does Manscaped have the tool for you because that lawnmower 5.0. It's incredible. Dead serious. We were getting some honest to God testimony before the show started. Uh, you know, it's good if we're having an off air. We're having an off air conversation about testimony. the high quality yeah. of the lawnmower 5.0. I know I've said it on the show before, but the the leaps in quality from the the I think we were at like the 2.0 last time we had a Manscaped ad. 2.0, no disrespect, but your game stunk. Uh, 5.0, it has made a massive leap to a different galaxy. The 5.0 is super quality. Uh, it has LED lights to pay, uh, to 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 shine to shine the way. Uh, shine you the you way. don't want to be cutting in the dark. It's got LED lights to illuminate wherever you're going. Uh, it also is waterproof. It's got some heft to it. It, it charges wirelessly, Still the which is thing. the most insane thing that I've ever heard. It comes with a compact case, a nice little travel case where you can put all the attachments and, and all that good stuff. So uh, if you want to make sure that you're looking good and keeping yourself in fine, hygienic, manscaped condition, go to manscaped.com and use uh, promo code WHATCHAOS for 20% off and free shipping. That is uh, 20% off and free shipping with code WHATCHAOS at manscaped.com. This St. Patrick's Day, make sure your little or not so little hairy leprechaun is luckier than ever with Manscaped. I know this, Cut my penis. <laughs> I know this gets into uh, brunch territory, but boy, an oops all ad reads what <laughs> chaos would be really good. Also, another way that I would position, phrase... I'm not telling you how to do your job. The uh, the progress that's been made in the the various Manscaped things is that they continue to develop better and they better don't rest products. on their laurels. It's a it's a technology company. They're always that's innovative. True. They're the dominoes. They're the of, dominoes uh, of penis cutting. It's, yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, 5.0 it means they they don't stop. And there's nothing to suggest they're gonna stop. And they they did so well with 2.0. Imagine how great it is at 5.0. I feel like I feel like shitting on the 2.0 is like shitting on the original iPhone. It's like if it's, you compare it's, it yeah, to the 15, it might not be great, but at the time it was revolutionary. That's true. I mean, when we had our podcast and we got the lawnmower 2.0, I wasn't like check out this garbage; it's going in the trash. Yeah, one thing it though, didn't cut my penis. And a good thing about uh, your testimony that uh, I thought was uh, wise to raise. Uh, the light that shines the way mm -hmm. is a nice touch. Thanks. It's a nice touch on there that you could listen. You don't want to be dancing in the dark. When That's it comes, right. When you it don't comes want your leprechaun dancing in the dark. <laughs> no. You want to dance in the dark with your leprechaun in other ways, but not when it comes to hygiene and uh, and manscaping. Who all seen a leprechaun say, "Oh, hello, <laughs> hello, fresh." <laughs> Okay, uh, we are we are heading overseas, folks. Big news. We are heading overseas. We're we an international decided, podcast. We haven't decided where yet, but the NHL just revealed its list of global series games for next season. Uh, the Sabers are going to go to Germany on September 27th to play Red Bull Munich, which that's a preseason game, but. They, I believe Sean also said that the they're opening game. an arena. I, I, th I thought I read that. I forgot to look it up to confirm. But um, grand opening, grand closing. Yeah, they're they're playing at SAP Arena in. Uh, in I'm Germany. assuming it's in Munich. Yes. Uh, that'll be fun. We, I, I'd like to check out a Sabres Red Bull Munich game, especially if it's at a brand new arena in Germany. I've always wanted to go to Germany. I'm still I'm like kind of lightly planning a trip to Germany. Maybe that's on the table. I think the the real interesting ones though are the regular season global series games. The NHL season is going to kick off with the Sabres and Devils in Prague on October 4th and 5th with two games there and then uh, about a month later the Stars and Panthers are heading to Finland on November 1st and 2nd. So We've got Germany, we've got Prague, and we've got Finland. I lied to you, by the way. It's not a new arena. Okay, no. well... Still, still cool, it's Germany. Sliding right? down the power rings of games that I want to go to. So, I have done one of these before, not to brag. You uh, did a preseason game, right? Regu I did... So, I did... Not to brag or flex, but you're viewing the... Uh, pre the, the Sabres thing as they do this trip, and then they do this trip. It's all one big trip. 
I did that where that the sense. Bruins uh, played the Belfast Giants mm -hmm. in Belfast. Then they went to uh, Liberets Czech Republic to play. I think it was just HC Liberets for a preseason game. And then they played two regular season games to open the season in Prague against the Coyotes. And this these were very important games in Bruins history because not only were they the first two games of Tyler Sagan's career, this was the beginning of the 2010-11 season. So, and you remember who is the uh, Conn Smythe winner in 2011, who set the record for the save percentage in the NHL that season, Tim Thomas. Mm -hmm. Game number one started by Tuka Rask. People forget that Tim Thomas reclaimed his job in that season, and Tuka started game one. They lost. Well, I did. They didn't play great. Went to Tim Thomas for the second game, which it was a plan. They were there. It was a back to back, but Thomas was unbelievable in the second game. And when they came back to the United States, I want to say their next game was against the Devils, and they were like. Fuck, you know, Thomas is coming off surgery. He had like a good game and everything. Like, let's like throw him a little bone and a reward. And just T Tuca never had a fucking chance of getting the job back after that. Tim Thomas sets the record for save percentage, which I want to say was 940. And Bruins won the cup. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, people shouldn't forget that uh, that Tim Thomas won his job back that year because famously the year prior, the Bruins blew it to the mm -hmm. Philadelphia Flyers in playoffs. And that's part of the reason why, not to get into like the two grass discourse, but that's definitely part of the reason why Bruins fans developed a a certain segment of Bruins fans developed a, a distaste for Tuka Rask is because the Bruins choked away a 3-0 series lead to the Philadelphia Flyers in the playoffs one year. Tuka Rask was the starter. Then the following year, Tim Thomas gets the playoffs and they win the Stanley Cup behind one of the best playoff performances from a goaltender that we've ever seen. Yeah, shout out to Dan Ochara. He was unbelievable. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so I did the trip of like flying around, bouncing around, bouncing around. Uh, we used U2's plane. That oh, was a cool thing. Yeah. That's awesome. U2's plane. Was it like a very fancy plane? It was a fancy plane. Uh, they had amazing backpacks for all of us. And I still have it. It's beat to shit, but it's this like really rugged, amazing Reebok bag that says like NHL season blah, 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 blah. there's Bruins logos on it it's amazing but that is to say why can't we do a whole ass Jeremy Sabres trip Rog. I was gonna say uh, as Jade in the chat pointed out here too it's Oktoberfest in Germany at that time um, <laughs> plus it's Europe it's like getting to another country is easier than it is to like leave the state of Massachusetts yeah um, okay I'm not also, I'm not staying till November, though, to go to Finland. Ah, uh, see, I really want to do Finland. I think of all of those, I, I want to do all of those. You've already been to Prague, though. I've already been to Prague. I, I feel like the Germany-Prague, though, is you get two, two, two birds with one stone yeah. as opposed to just going to Finland. And as you said, that is some Europe shit. Bouncing yeah. around. Bouncing around bouncing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know. I... Fun fact about me, personally, uh, I've never left the country outside of going to Canada. I don't. That's crazy to going me. to Canada, but it's especially crazy because one year ago today, or excuse me, four years ago today, um, was when the travel ban got announced, and four years ago tomorrow was when I was supposed to leave for Europe for the first time ever. I was supposed to go to Amsterdam and London, and I never got to go because the world ended literally the day I was supposed to leave. Um, so, getting to go to Europe for the first time for uh couple of Sabres games would be that would rock doing a doing a trip uh, doing anything international with Sean would rock because he's like yeah. a geography nerd yeah like oh, you're still gonna show us it. around even though you've never been there knowledge. before yeah and over the last over the last like year or so the like Germany is has skyrocketed up my list of places in Europe I want to go it's like it's definitely top five in in Europe so uh wouldn't hate it two things on Prague as I said before when we were talking about JJ Paterka like when the Bruins got off the bus when they arrived in Prague and like David Krejci and I mean, David Krejci is actually from the Czech Republic. Char is from Slovakia, but he's still like a big star over there. It ruled to see just like a shit ton of people who are like, holy fuck, David Krejci's back home. 
That's where, gonna be Paterka. It's gonna be a fucking yeah. Rock well, star. I, mean, they I had that love with, that. They had that with Drysaddle, right? They went. To, did they go to Germany for Drysaddle or no? I don't know. So well, I, was, I mean, we saw how Willie Nylander was treated in Sweden. Like mm-hmm. he was a fucking god, and he did like that. Whatever the Swedish version of the Graham Norton show is, he went on that <laughs> yeah. with like celebrities, <laughs> and an old elderly lady was like, "I want to fuck you," <laughs> and so. I, I I love the global series. I'm I'm really kind of getting into them going to uh, places with a direct tie to a singular player or a couple of players in which they are like the Beatles when they return. Stars in Finland. Oh, that's Rebe. true. Yeah, yeah. So Rupe. they have a lot of Finnish players. Rupe. Yeah, and Barkov and Rupe will be going home, and then um, Andre Palat. According to this article, Devils forward Andre Palat owns a home in Prague and spends part of his offseason there. He grew up three and a half hours away in Fredek Mistek. So mm. kind of a homecoming for Palat as well. But I mean, they got you got Miro Haskinen as well. Yeah. Uh, Finland, like- An- Anton Lundell, E2 Lusterinen, and Nico Mikola are all from Finland. And then, yeah. Damn. Uh, Miro Haskinen is from Holinsky. Have I to- I've told the story. I can't remember if I've told it on here, but... I believe I've told it to Sean and Pete's probably seen it, heard it, read it from me at some point or another. Uh, the cab driver in Prague and how I was saved by Dominic Kashik. Well, I do remember. I feel it. like you've heard. You've, you've told me a story about how you got like dangerously drunk in Prague. Oh, well, that's a different thing. Okay. <laughs> but I got dangerously drunk in Prague. Whatever. It's going to happen. Young people. Everybody lived. Uh, I was trying to go to a hockey practice, wrote down the address uh, of the rink, gave it to the cab driver. He drives to this like alley, stops the car. I look down the alley. There's a guy smoking a cigarette, looking down at us. He sounds cool. I was very, he was cool. I was very uh, nervous going into this trip. I was fresh out of college and, uh, the movies hostel and (laughs) taken were popular at the time. And I had it in my head that I for sure was like, the apple of Europe's eye that like they want Deej like they're coming they're coming for him so I already had my guard up about like um I was with other people but I was like staying by myself it's like this work trip and everything uh I get driven to this alley and I'm like uh no and I was like uh uh hockey arena and every time I say hockey the driver says like okay he thinks i'm saying like okay good job and he kept saying okay and i was so fucking scared and i kept saying hockey and i was like hockey and he was like okay get out <laughs> fucking weirdo uh and then eventually i was like uh hashik uh hashik yager and he was like oh yeah, okay and he just like drove around the corner to this <laughs> ring That's incredible. but dominic hashik saved my life gotta say handball it's big handball europe's big handball place and they use the arenas for handball a lot too ah. as chat pointed out uh famously a lot of people have been saved by dominic hashik or alternatively a lot of people have been robbed by dominic hashik that's oh, right that's a because good, he's a criminal that's Eminem. a good point uh chat also saying uh european pro shop wars would go crazy it would Imagine fucking tossing. What is Prague? Was is is just everything over there? Euro? I forget what I used. Uh, the, I believe I don't think Czechia is Czech. Euro. I think was like crowns. I think it's. Uh, I was literally just looking at this. Kron or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, yeah, yeah. It's okay. something like that. It's the Kron or something like that. I don't know. I, I I don't know, but I do know that I will spend however much I possibly can in the European Pro Shop Wars. Here's uh, the issue, though. October 5th and 6th, which is when these games are being played. And you're going to say that, or this is lame, but it's not. And it's a tough decision. Uh, That's when Vampire Weekend plays Madison Square Garden, including a matinee show. And that's just fucking cool. Who's ever been to a matinee arena concert? That's an exciting thing. I want to do it. I'll I'll be honest. if uh, If going to Europe was on the table... And you said and uh, you chose can't because and of that's the reason I would genuinely never forgive you. Yeah, I think like, yeah. I, 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 I think I would, I would, I think I would actually you kill you, especially <laughs> like never having been to Europe. If I had the chance to go to Europe for your work, and you were like, ah, there's a concert in New York. Okay, I'll say I won't let that be the hang up, but I don't like that this set up, like uh, dismissing and making the concert uh, less than it is. It's less fun. Then. I think that it's the the Vampire Weekend concert is is cool, 
and it's fun and it's unique. But uh, if you were to ever tell anybody that you skipped a trip to Europe to go do work and watch hockey games in favor of going to Madison Square Garden for an afternoon concert featuring Vampire Weekend, I think they would, most people would be like, what a loser. I mean, and I that would be like, no offense to Vampire Weekend. They have a song at least acknowledging like how they're seen and stuff called Unbearably White. <laughs> It would be the whitest thing in the world for a white American man to not travel to Europe because he wants to go see a <laughs> Vampire Weekend concert in New York City. I, uh, but also, like, I don't even do you. If you'd rather go to a concert than go to Europe, fine. That's not what I care about. It's the fact that you would be robbing Pete and I. Yeah, so yeah. Saying, like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it to you guys. I did famously uh, not go. I, I did famously go to a Foo Fighters concert instead of Adam Jones's wedding in Saint Martin. Jeez. Well, Saint I was Martin. young and poor. It would Saint have been Martin expensive. Is, yeah, that's that's totally fair, I think. I'll tell you what, uh, though. Destination wedding, you have to be uh, prepared for people doing anything but going yeah. to your wedding. My that friends I and I tell stories of that all the time, but I was young, poor, uh, single, like having to foot all that by yourself. I could have tricked somebody else into picking up half the tab, maybe, but nah. And it was a good concert. It was when Dave Grohl broke his leg. So they had to move the stage around, and based on how they readjusted the stage, my seats ended up being front row. Great time. Probably better than Adam Jones's wedding, to be honest. Uh, my number one goal from right now is uh, selling our European excursion so that we can go and go for like a week plus yeah. to, do, uh, to do Germany and then do Prague and Oktoberfest in the middle. I think that we can sell that. But it would help if we jumped our YouTube subs. So if you're watching this uh, show right now, please hit the subscribe button if you're not. Uh, and also give us a thumbs up. Hit that like spike, baby. Three, two, one, like spike. Give us the thumbs up right below the video player. I don't know what, uh, you almost, you almost uh, showed ass. You almost showed ass. <laughs> you almost showed ass on, uh, on stream. So if, that, if that's something you're interested in, Head to our YouTube channel. And uh, DJ is swapping out some jerseys because we've had a, a, an Oilers raid in the chat. And somebody said, you got to get a McDavid jersey on the set. So DJ just wanted to flex a little bit, show off that we do have a Connor McDavid jersey. Yeah. How about that? Whatever you ask for, you get. Uh, we have a problem in Boston Bruins land. And uh, we discussed yesterday that Lena Solmark had nixed a trade reportedly to the Kings, had a good performance on Sunday in a 5-1 to one win over the Penguins. There was a big hug between Jeremy Swayman and Lena Solmark after the game. We spoke very glowingly of that. We like Lena Solmark. We like Jeremy Swayman. We like that they are staying together. Uh, there is a different perspective on this, and it comes from our friend Mike Felger. We're going to play a pretty long cut, but I think it's important because it sets up an interesting conversation about the state of the NHL in a way that we probably hadn't considered. So here is a friend of the show, Mike Felger. It's pretty obvious that uh, the Bruins had a trade for Linus Allmark to the Kings, and he shot it down with his no trade clause. And then he goes out and plays very well on Saturday against the Penguins, and they beat the Penguins. I don't know if you saw this particular goalie hug with Swayman. There was a little more mustard on this hug, and it was obvious that Jeremy Swayman was pointing to the ice and pointing to Linus Allmark as if to say, this is your spot, you're not going anywhere. It got a big cheer. This hug lasted a little longer than most, a little more meaningful than most, because Allmark didn't want to go anywhere, and he made sure that he didn't go anywhere. So now Linus Allmark is here for the duration, and he sort of talked about it after the game. Some games you're going to take with you a little bit longer, obviously, and you're going to keep it a little bit in the memory bank and you can pull it out from time to time. So um, same thing there. You know, I got emotional as well when Sway said all these nice words to me, and uh, I would have done the same for him as he, if he was in my shoes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to talk about, but like I said, I'm just so gosh darn happy. Okay. <laughs> They tried to trade him. <laughs> I'm so I'm glad he's happy. happy. Yeah, no, no, that's what, you know. I'm just glad these guys are happy. You ever worry, Maz, that the Bruins are too happy? Yes. Yep. Like they're I, too comfortable down there? They like it too much? Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I, I worry about that with people in general and athletes in general, but yes. Okay, so that's the question. Do you ever worry that the Bruins are too happy? Oh, yeah. And I believe the answer is yes. 
It's one of my worries. I know that uh, Sean was a little late coming in here this morning. He looked as though he hadn't slept. It was he said you said you were upset that uh, you the Bruins might be too happy. Yeah, it keeps me up at night. To be okay, quite so uh, I don't think the Bruins are too happy, but I love that that thought exists. I it, I mean, if you're identifying the Bruins' problems, it's uh, depth and happiness. That is for sure, and it's it's too much happiness. Happiness. There's a little more mustard on this hug. That was a it was a little <laughs> little tight. He hug, hug, hugged him a little bit. Too much mustard. A little too much mustard. Uh, John Lennon said happiness is a warm gun, and the Bruins might shoot themselves in the foot with it, I think, mm-hmm. if they keep smiling the way at this rate. Uh, I mean, there is, there is some proof that unhappy teams do well. Yes. There is some proof. Just, I mean, if we're going to back... A couple years if, ago. If we're going to, if we're going to say, listen, this team's too happy, we got to have sort of... Uh, some proof to say if it goes in the other direction, things are going to get better. You brought up the point. The Colorado Avalanche. Who's are, unhappier than Nathan McKinnon? N- nobody is unhappier to play hockey than Nathan McKinnon. He fucking hates it. He plays so angrily. Hates every minute that he spends at the at the rink. He's leading that team. He is the uh, one of the heart candidates this season. There's also more proof with the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, Ryan Johansson, famously... Everybody kind of hates that guy. and uh, not, not on the team. Not on the team anymore. But uh, there's also more proof. Arturi Lekkonen's dad, mm-hmm. he, uh, he threw a grenade into that locker room earlier this se- season with Miko Rantanen. Uh, Devon Taves was, uh, was sitting around saying, listen, we got a bunch of bozos in this room. That's right. I think that if we do like power rankings of NHL teams right now based on happiness, unha- so you want to be unhappy. Mm-hmm. If you're happy, that's strike five, quite if frankly. If you're happy and you know it, get, get the fuck ready out to of learn my season, boys. Exactly. Why don't you get the, you know what I say about teams like that? Uh, why don't you go uh, set a, uh, call a golf club and ask if they've, uh, Got any appointments available for you to play golf because you're going to have to set a tee time the way that you play. If you're happy and you know it, put a clap into that boy. Why don't you get a, uh, why don't you get a golf cart? No, uh, why don't you uh, go eat some, smoke some cigars and... Declan, Declan's making a good point. Famously, bad weekend for Johnny Laz and he got a new job. So big weekend for him. Big weekend for, uh, for sadness. Oh, true. Oh, that's, that's right. That's true. Well, yeah. I, I was going to say, though, is this a uniquely hockey thing? Because famously, not a baseball pop, but Anthony Rendon fucking hates baseball. Hates and baseball. he sucks. Yeah. And the Angels suck. And he never plays. So it might yeah, just yeah. be a uniquely hockey thing. Baseball's soft because you can win while happy. Uh, true. Yeah. I, uh, I would say another team that I really like for the Cup this year based on... I mean, you just go through like other teams that are unhappy. I hate to give it to them. Rangers... What a miserable experience that is mm-hmm. between the owner, the bitchy statements. I think they're playing the game the right way, quite frankly. They're very upset very often. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks, I like this year because Connor Bedard is getting more and more pissed each game. It's true. Punching stuff. Usually with, what is it, his left hand, I think? He just likes punching shit on the bench. Yeah, he's got a... He's got the right attitude. Some people might say he's got to get that under control, but I think that if you look at at the correlation between unhappiness and success, mm-hmm. it's there. Senators also uh, pretty unhappy. Here's one for you. The Nashville Predators. They were famously prevented from going to the concert that they wanted to see, mm-hmm. and then they ripped off like nine straight wins. Yeah. Unhappiness gets dubs. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not mocking this Felger thing. You left two big ones out for me. Uh, New York Islanders, famously in a playoff spot. True. Um, weren't allowed to have fun at the stadium series. Had to come in suits and ties. Lou, famously not a fun guy. Uh, and then uh, maybe not the whole team, but Kirill Marchenko, good at hockey, hates fun, hates music. Uh, oh. so there's that. Uh, Kirill Marchenko doesn't hate fun. He just hates like a specific segment of fun. That's fair, but I feel like hating music qualifies as like... I just and think being anti fun. I like on paper, life. that's big. You must be fun at parties energy. Yeah, right? exactly. But I would, I would have a party with Karel Marchenko. Oh, yeah. I would um, have a party if that party is us sitting in a room and not really doing anything, just talking. What's cool, I, I, I bet that Karel Marchenko would fucking crush a pizza party. 
Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. He looks like he seems like a good, big like hold court kind of guy. Oh like, yeah. You walk in and all of a sudden everyone's just crowded around one guy and you're like, what's this guy about? You walk over, it's Kirill Marchenko. He's a magnetic personality, yeah. and the Blue Jackets are like, how do we get this guy off the ice? Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers, they were horrible at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. They're famously led by uh, a oftentimes bitchy pair of superstars. Krusty. Krusty. I'd say that Connor, I love Connor McDavid, obviously. He's the GOAT. Uh, he's crusty. Mm-hmm. Leon, Leon Dreisaitl. Is snippy. He's snippy. He's mm. he's irritable. Very irritable. Uh, uh, they also they they hate podcasts. He said no. We hate podcasts. We won't do them. Mm. And so uh, they've Popeyes, got some curmudgeon to them. Somebody in the chat noted that uh, my performance on the show will go way up if I am not allowed to go to a Vampire Weekend concert. That's true. 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 Yeah, we're, you're we, going to have your best series of shows in Europe. I'm going to rattle Pete, off like a 12 shower. Pete, yeah. we need to, at, from this point forward, be like, you're going to Vampire Weekend so we can take it away from them. <laughs> Hype yes. it up. Yeah, we need to be able to take it away from them. Uh, I was going to say. Pissy. Um, yeah. That's I, the word we always use for Leon Drysettle is pissy. I love him so pissy. much. We got um, him right on the set. The uh, For as, as fun as they are outside of the actual team, the Vegas Golden Knights, I feel like, are not a fun hockey team. Uh, like the actual team is not like you don't ever really hear a whole lot about them. Like, they did. We had this argument and I forget what side of it we were each on. But like I just consider the Vegas Golden Knights adults. Yeah, they're yeah, adults, they, but they're there to to work. They're not there to have fun. They're old enough to cheat, but they yeah. they, <laughs> they exist on both sides because I think that we had this conversation in Vegas after going to Vegas Golden Knights practice because uh, at practice. It was like it was also the first practice post uh, All Star break, so maybe they were just really happy to be back on the ice together. Mm-hmm. But they were goofing around like crazy. Jonathan Marchessault was like the most fun loving guy. Yeah. Uh, like they were giggling, they were pushing each other around, like goofing around. But you're right that once 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 the arena lights are on at T-Mobile, it's business. They're all business. They are a grown man hockey team. Oh yeah, which I feel like you kind of have to, to be because if if you are like in the locker room and there's a literal night fight happening on the ice that you're about to go on, you yeah. kind of have to be serious. And you they can't just get keep distracted. bringing in like more and more stars, like other teams' top stars, and it's never like too many personalities or too many egos in the room. The Vegas Golden Knights it, are. As business as it comes. You know it was such a good get for that team? Bruce Cassidy. Yep. Like, awesome coach. And we were talking about the uh, the Hurdle thing. Like, I don't doubt Hurdle is going to work out there. They are afforded the opportunity. Like, because of how they manage the cap and because of how they manage their roster, like, that's going to work there. If another team traded for Tomas Hurdle... To take six years of what, nearly seven million dollars against the cap each year, be like, what the fuck are those idiots doing? Is he gonna fucking turn your luck around? But he goes in there and he's just like one of the guys, cap doesn't matter. <laughs> That's going to work there where it's probably not gonna work in other places. Well, I mean, how about the happiness to success ratio? Bruce Cassidy, famously, not a lot of his players have loved been playing happy. for him, have been happy to play for him. Same thing with John Tortorella. He's not always uh, appeasing his players and, and trying to uh, uh, upgrade their happiness all the time. Mm-hmm. But there, he's a successful coach, and same with Bruce Cassidy. There's a little much on that do you on th- that hug. Do you think that's the cycle for Torts? Like, Torts is an asshole. They end up being really good. But then since Torts is an asshole, his players kind of rally around him. They start liking him and playing too much. And then Torts can't get across is, the finish does line. Does Torts keep getting fired because his players come around on him? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Questions need to be asked. Yeah. The vibe, right, because w- once you reach the point of people being happy, the questions do got to be asked, and the question is, do you worry that they're too happy? We yeah. just started talking about out. Torts kind of being likable. Flyers 4-5-1 and one over the last time. Oh, man. Mm. I mean, yeah, there is, there is kind of a cycle where it's like, uh, this guy's an asshole. And then you find out that it's like a, a, a teacher from high school. You're like, man, that guy was such an asshole. And then later on, a couple of years into it, you're like, oh, he's an asshole because he cares about me. He wants to see me succeed. And then you come around on him and you're like, hey, he, he can be a bit much, but his heart's in the right place. I like him a lot. 
And then when you start to like him, he gets fired. Those are the teachers that did it for me. Because even if I don't like the topic, and this happened, this has been like the only way I've been able to do things well in life. Like either I need to care about it a ton or you need to care about it a ton. And if you care about it a ton, I will fucking follow you to the ends of the earth because like we're fucking doing something. And like I forget what subjects my favorite teachers like that taught, but they were generally not things that interested me a lot. But I was like, for you, <laughs> this is your fucking life. Yeah. I Let's do you. it. That, that yeah. was me with my English teachers. I ha- I hated reading in high school, but my English teachers were always the best. So I was like, I guess I'll do this for you. Um, the Calgary Flames. Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted out of Calgary. Everybody was getting traded out of Calgary, and then suddenly they were like, oh, maybe we'll maybe we'll push for the playoffs. Who who knows? The Winnipeg Jets. Famously, Winnipeg is like one of the worst cities in North America. <laughs> yeah, no. they're amazing, kind of. <laughs> yeah, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, led by Nikita Kucherov, who is. If we're talking about pissy, mm. Nikita Kucherov, extremely pissy. I'd also forgotten. The chat reminded us. The reason we were saying pissy with uh, Dry Saddle, of course, is the Jim Matheson exchange. Yeah. Uh, it, it, pissy is just in my head with him, probably because of that. Why are you always so pissy, Leo? Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. You are. No, you are. <laughs> yeah. Great exchange. In a press. Like I've, was, that, was that Matheson? I think. Or, or it was. was it uh, Specter? I think it was Matheson. But that was in I, – I, sometimes I would have those little, like, head-butting things, but it was never, like, podium seat. Yeah. It's, like, scrum or just, like – On like, a more personal level. Yeah, there's just more of, like, a, hey, look, I didn't mean it that way. Don't fucking – get like, that that kind of thing, the way that people talk to each other. On a podium, that is so funny to me. <laughs> hey, I got to follow so up. so pissy. Why are you being – I said you're being pissy. <laughs> yeah, you're pissy sometimes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's pissy. Uh, shout out, Leon. Absolutely uh, love him. Uh, lastly, I want to quickly squeeze in a uh, a whatnot hit me a whatnot hit me up uh, on social and said they were getting into hockey and wanted to know which resources I would recommend for. Uh, they wrote, "I'm new to hockey and would like to know what you think it was the best resource to learning and understanding the sport." The way I got into hockey was playing it. And that's probably the only way I would ever end up understanding it. I think generally I would recommend some sort of immersion. So either watch as many games as you can skate. Like what, what's, I feel like you guys would have a better answer. Video games for me. I, I never, said video I, games. I didn't really play. I, I never played hockey, but I always loved like the, as far as learning the rules are concerned, that was big for me. Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay because I remember growing up playing NHL 2K3. And then once I really started watching hockey, I was like, why are they passing over two lines? What's going on there? Uh, but yeah, no, the, the, if you're playing video games, you're like forced to learn the rules. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's like kind of uh, twofold for me. It was video games and also just watching hockey uh, yeah, growing up. Like ho- growing up, I probably got my baseline knowledge from video games to like actually understand how some of the rules work um, in a frustrating sense, because if you don't know the rules and you're trying to play a video game, you're constantly getting hammered by like the two line. Pass. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, what the fuck? I don't I don't understand this goddamn rule. I don't understand uh, icing. So that was a good way to get sort of like the baseline knowledge, but really, and the fun part about hockey is that I've been, it's been my life, been my, like my entire personality for 10 plus years at this point, still learn new shit uh, every time, not every time, but frequently when I watch games, there's stuff that I did not realize, whether it was the uh, the yeah. overtime thing that we say. talked about yesterday with the goalie pulled in over, overtime, if you score uh, or if you get scored on with the goalie pulled, you don't get that extra point. Like that's some shit that you're constantly reminded about and uh, you, you're just picking up new things here and there. But I think the easiest way to do it is to just watch as many games as possible, get a knack for like some of the trends, get a knack for how plays develop, it's the rules, the players, things like that. Also just ask questions. Yeah, like, oh yeah. People that actually like like hockey want the game to grow and aren't going to treat you like an asshole, asshole for asking. I mean, I like I worked with Petey uh, in Phoenix, who was an NHL coach for 25 years, and I have never been around somebody who was more interested in like teaching the game of hockey. And I mean, if anyone had the right to be like, I don't have time for this, it's somebody who coached in the fucking NHL for 25 years. Um, and I've I learned so much from him. Like people that love hockey, I feel like generally want other people to like. Oh, yeah. I strongly agree. Like, they're not going to talk down to you about that. Uh, Bob Beers, who's the 
uh, former NHL player. He's the uh, color analyst for the Bruins on the radio is like that. Like I would always feel comfortable going up to him being like, Hey, I saw they're doing this. Is this the way I am? I seeing it right? And he'd be like, Oh, uh, that's possible. It's also possible that whatever, and like you wouldn't be like, Oh, you didn't play the, in the NHL. So you're not seeing it exactly the right way. Like, and he, he'd end up having a conversation with me that would make me smarter. And some people, like some writers, I, I'd recommend Fluto Shinzawa, clearly see everything a lot more easily, but they communicate it in a way that doesn't make you feel dumb. That's what's also, I think, fun about hockey is you could see something a hundred different ways and it happens so fast that ultimately if a guy fucks up, like they fuck up in a split second, they're not a huge idiot for it, but the consequences and the stakes are high. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's also like, there's so much going on in hockey at, at all times that it is a difficult thing to, it can be overwhelming if you're Mm. not fully aware or, um, you know, fully knowledgeable about the sport, it can be tough. And, uh, that's why I hate the gatekeeping energy behind hockey because it is there are a lot of gatekeepers in hockey and it's part of the sales pitch that we made for the show uh and that's why i'm glad you're getting questions like this is like one of the big things that we wanted to do with the show was to have it be accessible to people who might be like on the peripherals or be trying to get into the sport so if you ever have questions for us like feel comfortable feel free we'll answer them as best we can and if you do encounter somebody in hockey who has like gatekeeping energy and treats you like a fucking idiot call them out be like don't be a fucking dick i'm trying to like your sport yeah and that's that's always going to be more about them than it is about you uh i'll also say uh like there's levels to this you don't need to like get into hockey to the point where you know salary caps and how power plays and run are run and stuff like that like you can ease into it. Yeah, I'm a, for sure. I'm a big NBA fan, and I am totally aware that I understand and see basketball worse than I do other sports, but that doesn't make me like it less than I like football or anything. That's a good point. Like you, you, The goal of getting into sports doesn't always need to be. I mean, God, think of how a lot of people listen to music. They're for sure not yeah. like, sometimes to my chagrin, they're not like, boy, do you hear that fucking shaker buried in the mix? They're just like, I like this, this song. This sounds good. This yes. makes me happy. That's what hockey can be for you. You don't have to. You don't have to speed run hockey or yeah. like catch up with speed people. Speed runs are sick though. <laughs> I just speed runs are pretty them. sick. You don't have to speed run hockey fandom. You don't have to catch up with people that have been watching for a long time. If you try to do that, it's going to be a a losing battle. Um, I I would also recommend Greg Wyshynski, friend of the podcast, has a book called Keep Your Eye Off the Puck. And it it like essentially breaks down what you can look for while watching hockey that will make you a smarter fan. And I think that that is a very cool book. And, and if, you know, if you're getting into it, that's a good place to start. Yeah, or at generally least have like a supplemental reading. Generally with like watching the games, I just like zoom out 20 percent, like however you're watching it, zoom out like. 20 to 40 percent and it becomes a lot easier to understand yeah i would say and i mean i know i'm a company man but like genuinely pd at for the ph next coyotes like he does a terrific job at like breaking stuff down he'll like explain what a four check is he explains all of this stuff like what pe- what power plays are like trying to accomplish uh so check out ph next underscore coyotes on yeah. lastly yeah. they'd ask uh, they, they said any teams i would recommend watching I always, and I've gotten people into hockey the last couple of years by Let saying, me guess. truly watch the Oilers yeah. because you get to see the best offense. You get to see extremes. Mm-hmm. So like when you watch the Oilers, you know, you learn what amazing offense is. You learn what not great defense is. You see high scoring games. That's probably exciting for a new hockey viewer. I would also say the Tampa Bay lightning mm-hmm. because they, uh, they basically allow as many goals as they score as well. Plus they've got an incredible power play. So you learn a little bit about special teams. You get excited when the team goes on the power play, they always score. Those would be the two teams I would say to watch. I would, uh, I would throw three more in the mix. I would say the Detroit Red Wings. They're very fun this year. They're like last year's Buffalo Sabres in that like high event hockey, a lot of talent there, high pace. I really like them. 
I would also say uh, the Colorado Avalanche, they've got Nathan McKinnon. They're, they're imperfect defensively. Kale McCarr, like a lot of things to watch there. Do you have another one? I do have another one. Uh, third would be the Florida Panthers because the Florida Panthers in really, really fun, obviously great team emerging as the best team in the Eastern Conference, but they're also like shitheads. Talented and scrappy. Mm. They're very scrappy. The, the Florida Panthers probably lead the league in scraps yeah. per 60. Yeah. They're yeah. always mixing it up. Well, so if you're into that side of the game, absolutely the Florida Panthers are a team to watch. And that's why I love fighting because that's what got me into hockey. And like, obviously I like hockey way more than that, but I've said multiple times, like my formative hockey experience was a, a line brawl between the, the Ottawa Senators and the Buffalo Sabres. And like, I think whatever gets you into the sport is what gets you into it. Honestly, like altern alternately to what you guys said, like watching the Arizona Coyotes taught me so much more about hockey. And again, I had the fortune of being around a guy who coached in the, in the NHL for two decades, but like, when a team is constantly fucking up, you get to see why they're fucking up, mm -hmm. like what they're doing wrong, what they're supposed to be doing. Um, and I also think, again, company man, like finding a team that has a podcast, like or has somebody covering it the way that like all city covers their local brands helps a lot. Like having somebody like having a, a, a community to talk about what's happening with or like what, what's going on and uh, like explain things to you and make it more fun. I think somebody you like into more. the uh, like to watch like as many games as you possibly can point like it is important to watch good teams but it's also almost equally as important to watch bad teams and see what separates yeah them. especially <laughs> if it's a good team playing a bad team like yeah. if you're watching the Oilers versus the Coyotes you're like damn that Conor McDavid guy is clearly a little different clearly like, better and this than team everybody is clearly else. a little different they're doing things that this other team just can't seem to do for some reason um, and it, yeah it makes you appreciate the, another the game. thing and this is not now I'm like uh, racking up debt for this person who is just asking for uh, some ways to watch hockey. I'll tell you what, going to a game, being able to see everything, at least me with my ADD, you would think maybe that would be a little more distracting because there's the lights and everything. But like the most locked in I am on hockey oh, yeah. is when I am sitting in the stands Looking like, even more so like than when I was like covering it and in the press box because even then I had my computer and stuff and I would just dick around and like flirt with Pete online or whatever. But when you're just in the stands, especially a lot of the games I've been going to recently have been with Pete and Sean, like with fellow hockey fans, just sitting there being like, look how good he is. Yeah. Look how tall he is. And and uh, I think it was Emily in the chat that pointed out, like, it doesn't necessarily have to be NHL games. Like, if you live in Canada or you live around a minor league team or college hockey, like, that's also great ways to get into the, to the game, especially because the people that tend to be at those games probably love hockey more than anybody else in the world because they're watching minor league. So that's, I mean, how I got into baseball. I didn't grow up in a, in a baseball city. I grew up in Buffalo, and I just have, being able to go to as many baseball games as I wanted for $10 a pop, like, made me love maybe love baseball so uh, this has been a great conversation shout out that uh listener for a giving us a chance uh, enjoying our stuff and uh trusting us to potentially steer them in the right direction hopefully we could we did that a little bit derrick henry is signed with the baltimore ravens wow whoa let's go ravens i want lamar to win so bad because then what will they say what will they say <laughs> what will they say uh can we get a slate grade Yes, we can get a slate grade. Uh, there are 10 games this evening. It's brought to you by game time. Brought to you by game time. Brought slate to you by game time. Brought to you by game All time. All 10 of the games are brought to you by game time. 7 p.m. U.S. Red Wings at Sabres. 7 p.m. U.S. Blue Jackets at Canadians. Penguins at Senators. Sharks at Flyers. Rangers at Hurricanes. 8 p.m. U.S. Panthers at Stars. Coyotes at Wild. 8.30 p.m. U.S. Ducks at Blackhawks. 9 p.m. U.S. Avalanche at Flames, 10 p.m. U.S. Golden Knights at Kraken. There's some that the, you, you got a little bit of a uh, Patrick Kane Bowl, Red Wings at Sabres, finalists, if you will. You also just have the like, get ready to learn Buffalo Sabres, buddy. Like, if you're the Red Wings. I feel like that's looking at like an older version of yourself, being like, "Oh God, oh yeah." I hope that's. I hope it's not this as bad is us as it next looks. Year, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, there is also, I really quite like as I, uh, sorry, as I pull up the worst teams in hockey, you've got the Blackhawks and the Ducks, which is a real Celebrini bowl. <laughs> not where I thought you were going with that one. Uh, but Why? you're not, you're not wrong. I mean, you said you got 
a real good matchup. And then you went to uh, Ducks Blackhawks. Yeah, I, I would point out. I want to see who who deserves the guy. The Rangers are on the tail end of a back to back, but uh, the Rangers are playing the Hurricanes tonight. Those are two of the better teams in the Eastern Conference. Jake Brady Gensel. Shable. That's right. Jake Gensel is making his Carolina debut, uh, presumably. Between two and fan bases that are infamously not annoying on Twitter. That's also a good point. They might just be. They might just eat each other alive tonight. Would love to root for that. And then an hour later, you have Panthers at Stars. Stanley Cup preview. Potential Stanley Cup preview. So uh, love that matchup as well. Uh, blue Jackets and Canadians is a uh, matchup of teams with uh, blue in their nickname. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. And Golden Knights at Kraken. That's an okay one. I'm going to give this one an A-, minus. I think. Uh, Oilers have had two days in a row off, and I have been unsure uh, of what to do with myself. I'm watching these other games. It's not fun behavior. I'll tell you what. It kind of reminds me of the inevitable crushing disappointment that we feel every year when the Oilers are eliminated from the playoffs. That is the worst day on the calendar. That's a good call. And that I is just, true. It's it's so, so painful when Sean's the Oilers at exit us the like playoff picture. You motherfuckers. No, Sabres, Sean, you're going you're to feel it. season has been over for like... Four months for this guy, oh, Sean. No. You're gonna feel you're gonna feel it because you have yet to go through like the playoff process in the run with us. But when the Oilers are involved and you get to watch the Oilers every night or every other night during the playoffs, and it's the most cocaine circus thing you oh. can watch on any given night. When they exit the picture, you you know that like your life has gotten worse. Yeah, no, I my my little smirk was more at the idea that I'm gonna like watch. DJ live watch the end of the, the Oilers. <laughs> like I just I was more smirking at what that experience is going to be like. It's it's going to be we're both going to be depressed but DJ is going to be crushed. I also famously in the postseason uh boy. So the postseason uh especially once I wasn't covering hockey is just like staying up all night as it is for everybody who watches all the games but Really just like peak not knowing what to do with myself or how to take care of myself. A lot of stress eating. A lot of uh, just fucking like empty cans of beer hanging around. Not really doing the beer these days. One, but I always just like eat so much and just basically make myself sick because it's so nerve wracking watching hockey. One uh, playoff run, I decided at the beginning I was going to go keto and... So I just I just fucking inhaled chicken wings the whole time. I still so I still did bad behavior in stress eight. I was so fucking hot by the end of the playoffs. I will say one thing that you should know about me when it comes like uh, if if games have stakes, I choose sides. Like I am not going to sit and watch any of these series and be like I don't really care. Like I am going to and I also don't care who's around me and how much they actually care about the teams. I will be very actively rooting against the Bruins in every single series they play. And I don't care if you care, Pete. I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I like this about you. I like that we're going to have playoff runs in, in playoff series for the most part that neither one of us is really caring about who wins. Maybe we'll develop uh, affinities I as mean, the playoffs go on. We typically do. But I do like the idea of no matter what, Sean's going to be firmly entrenched in one side mm -hmm. of a playoff series and be rooting hard for one team. Like I'll be, I'll be rooting as we've talked about. Uh, I'll be rooting for the Panthers uh, in the East just because of a they're not the Bruins and b they got they got some guys I like there, including Kyle Okposo. Uh In the West, though, I'm just I'm so pumped for the Western Conference playoffs. Like oh, hell, I think I, I think anybody that wins. I, I, uh, in theory, I like the the Avs, but I'm gonna get really annoyed with Avs fans as they start winning. So then I'll probably turn on. So them. So let's lightly do this right now. Just run through them real quickly to wrap up the show. To like rooting interests, playoffs are to start today, and they're slightly off because of points percentage and everything. Uh, oh God! Red Wings at Panthers. Who are we rooting for in that series? Oh boy, I'm not I picking hate sides. That. I mm, you want the Panthers? I want the Panthers, but I also really like the Red Wings. Like the I Red Wings want are really fun. The Panthers to be deep in the play. I don't want to have another 2019. I, I want agree. the good teams to keep existing in the playoffs. And I said, but I if will, the Red Wings beat the Panthers, they're going to deserve it. So, that's true. Yeah. Merit. I puck lied. If the playoffs were to start today, I would 100% be rooting for the Bruins over the. So the, Bruins, the Leafs. Leafs would I want. Be next. There's nothing yeah, I want more Appreciate than the Leafs. That. 
to get eliminated in the first because like the, the Bruins anything, can lose in the, the in the if the there's cup. anything that you, unites people it's hatred over the Toronto Maple Leafs and I also think it would be I would like ideal situation the the Leafs lose in the first round the Bruins lose in the cup because that mm. maximizes the Fuck pain you, for those individual bitch. fan bases <laughs> all right real quick uh Rangers lightning uh lightning I I like I'm not going to pick sides either. either. Uh, Hurricanes, Flyers. Flyers. Flyers would be fun. And Flyers exciting. would be like the chaos pick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Stars, Predators. Stars. Stars. I, I said like a month ago not going back. And like, these aren't picking. We're just like picking like what What do we want to happen? What would be fun? I said, I said like a month or two ago that the playoff series I think I want to see the most in the East at least is Flyers, Red Wings somehow. I just think that would be chaos and a lot of fun. Uh, Knights, Canucks would be amazing. I would Ooh. love for the Canucks to try to find their way out of that, mainly for the Oilers' sake. I think that I'd be rooting for the Canucks in that, but I like the Knights so fucking yeah, much. Yeah, that would be a game time. Like That's one where I would say I don't have sides, and then as I'm watching it, I would I would. Yeah, get I don't have a side one. in that one, but it would be funny if the if Vegas got bounced in the first round after mm -hmm. like loading up as, Who's, as hard, heavily as they did. Bruins yeah. uh, last year. Uh, Jets, Avalanche. Jets probably because if I'm not care if I don't care about the Jets who is and lastly <laughs> oh, that's so it's so mean <laughs> but I mean famously that the smallest arena in pick. hockey I would probably pick the Abs I would want as much Nathan McKinnon as I possibly can get yeah I think it would be better for hockey like I would I think I would be much more entertained by an Abs run than a Jets run but in that particular series. I and for the, the second underdog. straight season, if the playoffs were to start today, Oilers Kings. I'll tell you what. The Oilers, who cares? I we're obviously Kings. rooting for the Oilers and Oilers win that. That's going to be a series. It's going to find its way to being Kings a series. Kings looks good, man. I will say if this is like Quinn Byfield, best player in hockey playoff type deal, like I would I would root for that. Like if we live in a world where Quinton Byfield all of a sudden has a, a Conn Smythe, I'd be like, dope. Dude, the, the, Kings, the Kings look good. Like they had a... They had a real they, rough stretch. Yeah. They went through it. But other than that, they have looked good for a majority of the season. Enjoyed their showing last night. Yeah. I, I, I want to keep an eye on the Islanders. It wasn't good behavior on their part. Kings, watch out for them. Okay, well, this has been a fun show. It's been an action-packed show. We've done uh, – we got in 10 seconds of hit chat. Figured out what to do with Matt Rempe. We didn't really figure out what to do with him. Just continue to let him be a – Tall guy who doesn't really play hockey a lot. He's relatively inconsequential. Just try to be safe out there. And uh, we taught you we uh, taught you how to watch hockey. So that's very nice of us. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with a recap of all that's going on in this crazy world of puck. Bye. We all silly like the mayor. 